We're in the lab today for some midday strategy. We've got rope drop covered, end of night too, but what about in the middle of the afternoon? Where should you be? What should you avoid? We'll even give some advice for those guests who are actually using Lightning Lane. This is Park Science. This is Fresh Bank. And our day starts today on this Wednesday afternoon at noon here on Main Street. Probably the busiest time of day, that's been my experience, the busiest time of day is that stretch between noon and four and that is why we are studying that time period today. We've got a schedule today that includes the monorail, uh, Peter Pan, churros, lunch in Toontown, Runaway Railway, lots more. It's somewhat aggressive, but there are also moments where I'm expecting to wait a little while. So, you know, we're hoping to get all this done by 4 p.m. That's gonna be the end of our session. And our session begins right now here on Main Street as we try to make our way to the monorail by 12.10 p.m. That's our first goal. And with that, let's go to Tomorrowland. So why am I choosing the monorail to start our afternoon? Well, uh, it is my position, it is my recommendation that you reserve uh, attractions that are not influenced very much by Lightning Lane for the middle of the day. Hey guys, I love transportation rides in the middle of the day. I love Fantasyland in the middle of the day. So that's what we're doing here first. We're gonna go on a monorail and this is sort of a cool down. I'm assuming, by the way, that You've already been here since 8 a.m. or something like that. But, I mean, really, it, it works for any kind of scenario where you're getting to the park at noon or you're, you're, you're at the noon part of your day. You shouldn't be trying to hit lightning lane attractions right now. And we can show you why, hopefully, uh, as we make our way through the park. But I like the monorail here because it's, <laughs> I love the monorail. <laughs> That's one good reason. But I like transportation rides. I like attractions that allow us to relax a little bit and, and sort of take a break from the day. Speaking of Space Mountain, she's right here. I'm seeing a posted wait time of 55 minutes. And that's a good example, a prime example of what's happening in the park. If you look at the tip board right now, which we can't do. Let's see. As we make our way to the monorail platform, we can see that uh, a lot of there are attractions. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, you're you're going to get a disparity. The the popular attractions are still going to have their higher end wait times, but there's a lot of attractions that are not very busy right now, like the Nemo subs, for example. That's on our calendar right now, and I'm almost tempted to get on those Nemo. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the app right now. It says 20 minutes. I'm looking at that queue and it's like the dang, it's the shortest queue we're going to see all day, I think. But I'm going to stick to our schedule, but darn if I don't want to get into that queue right now. That's on our schedule though. Uh, but, oh, Indiana Jones is closed. Let's see. Uh, Matterhorn is at 30. Runaway Railway 30, that's on our schedule also. Wow, smoke is running 10 minutes. Not very busy right now. And Roger Rabbit closed, Space Mountain 55, and there we go. And Star Wars 65. So during this time of day, noon to four is typically you know, the busiest time of the day for any given day. And you want to you want to try to avoid the most popular attractions in those cases. There goes Orange. And I will say, by the way, it is 12.05. The goal is to be on the monorail at 12.10. We are right on track for that when they're running two monorails. When one leaves the station, another one will be behind it in about five minutes. So even if you miss the one, you're hardly ever going to wait more than five minutes. This is another reason why I love doing these kind of attractions at this time of day. No influence from Lightning Lane, which means you've got a very predictable, very steady cadence, very steady rhythm. You can, you're reliable, you can predict what's going to happen. 
and I can predict that in uh, probably less than five minutes, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna go on a little commentary right here while we wait. Uh, this clock started, you know, it's been going for about 23 seconds. I, I think we'll see the monorail show up here before, before five minutes, but anyway. And that's what you're looking for middle day is predictable, easy attractions that don't tax you physically. Uh, <laughs> they don't tire you out. Now, I will say though, that if you are using Lightning Lane, the opposite is true. The opposite is true. Just like for rope drop, when if I have Lightning Lane at rope drop, I'm not going to Space Mountain. I'm not going to Indiana Jones or Big Thunder. I'm going to Fantasyland. Or it's not even, guys, that was one minute. <laughs> that was one minute. Uh, well, I'll pick this up in a second when we get off this monorail. On the right. And because we're not on a recon session, I'm gonna sit on the opposite side of the bench today to get a view that I don't normally get. I prefer this view to the other view because you get to see things that you don't normally get to see, like the, the distribution or the transportation hub there.
love riding the monorail so much because I love looking at things from up above. From up, everything looks cooler <laughs> when you're high above it like that. Even at the most mundane stuff like a parking lot or the transportation hub. I'm like, that's neat. 1221 as we're making our way down the ramp. Our goal was to be at the Storybook Land Canal Boats to enter the queue by 1235. So we are definitely ahead of schedule already. Yeah, well, it looks like the queue for Nemo has grown a little. It's still manageable. It says 20, but uh, that's probably twice as many guests as we saw before, but we're gonna stick to our schedule. Heading for uh, Storybook Land. Now you may have noticed when we looked at that tip board, I'll say real quick, that it looks like it's a slow day. It is a slow day. Uh, we're here on a Wednesday, as I mentioned. We are in, hey guys, how are you? Uh, we're in that period that we talked about in our State of Disneyland report where the discounted ticket season is over. So we're going to see lighter than usual crowds here in the park. But the, the theory still holds. You're going to get triple the wait time right now at a ride like the Matterhorn as you would at, let's say, Storybook Land or a Dark Light or something like that. And at 12.25, there is the Matterhorn queue. It's actually not bad. It's not... When we walked by the extended queue, it was not a raft around the side of the mountain. So I'm going to guess 30, 35 minutes here. Yeah, they're calling it 30. Oh my, look at that queue, awesome, <laughs> winning. Uh, okay, so we were supposed to be here at 12.35, it is 12.25, we're 10 minutes ahead of schedule. And uh, Swerbrick Land looks light as can be. That is a very nice looking queue right there. They're not using any of this section right there, nothing here, this switchback is empty. We're gonna be, I had scheduled, let's see, 25, 35 minutes for this attraction. My goal was to be out of here, or I, at our next stop, I should say, by 1.10. I feel like that's gonna be no problem. Twelve thirty-four, and I think that's our boat. No, that's not our boat, he's taken off. Okay, that's their boat. <laughs> that's our boat. Oh, God. 
The great thing about choosing attractions like we're doing here in the middle of the day and not being overwhelmed by the complexities and anxiety of lightning lane attractions is that you get to enjoy Disneyland in a way that a lot of people forget to do. And so that's why I, I, I really like this type of recommendation because I also like recommending people enjoy pure Disneyland. Now is the time to do that. Now is the time you want to be avoiding the high pressure stuff. Great opportunity to do this. Storybook thing, oh my gosh, that's so good. And all those Casey, that's the most Casey Jr. trains I think I've ever captured in one circuit around the canal. That was great. Uh, so it is 12.45 now as we make our way to Two Town. We're heading this way to get some lunch and to check out Runaway Railway and we are already 25 minutes ahead of schedule. And it's, I'm actually, I, I don't know how to feel about this because it's very rare that I do a, a study like this where I get this far ahead so quickly. Usually it's the other way around. Usually I fall behind, but the park is kind of, you know, exceptionally slow today. And perfect timing, just as we're approaching. We got notified for our mobile order at Cafe Daisy. We're heading for window four. Another benefit of having a kind of a slow day today is that you normally have a terrible time finding a table out here, uh, but there's lots of seating here. Most of it is in the sun though, it got some shade, but we're gonna post up back here by the Toontown City Hall. Got ourselves some shade. There's our pizza flop over. Man, kid, this thing is really, really cheesy. <laughs> Cheers, fresh bacon. By the way, we're eating at 12.53. And that is lunch at Cafe Daisy. I decided to spend 10 minutes of my acquired uh, savings, of time savings there to kind of relax and chill out for a bit. It is now 1.15 as we arrive to the entrance of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. The expectation there was to arrive by 1.30, so we're still well ahead of schedule. Post the wait time there says 20 minutes. Normally you're gonna find this queue at about 30 or 40 minutes at this time of day, which is what I budgeted. Uh, looks like I'm looking at my calendar now. Arriving at 1.30 and out of here in an hour. So it's not gonna obviously take that long at all. I was expecting like a 45 minute wait, but it's been light. Now, one reason why we're doing a lightning lane attraction in the middle of this study, where I have just got done saying, don't worry about, you know, skip lightning lanes right now. Skip lightning lanes in the middle of the day. But there are a few exceptions. There are a couple of attractions that I don't mind taking a chance on. This is one of them. For one, I love it. <laughs> it's one of my favorite rides, perhaps my favorite ride. But it's a delightful queue. Um, it's very fun to be here. It's long and winding and enjoyable, and it, there's plenty to uh, take in. and. You don't feel like you're wasting time just standing out there in the heat. So it's 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 the kind of queue that you don't mind waiting a half an hour in. I think that I would probably put pirates, small world, and probably even something like Star Tours in that same group of attractions that they're still manageable during the busiest time of day, either because of the ride system, like Small World and Pirates, which has an efficient, the most efficient ride system, and therefore isn't as affected by Lightning Lane, or Star Tours, which, you know, Buzz Lightyear even maybe, where these are attractions that don't typically get a lot of Lightning Lane influence. Folks, want to take a ride on the train? Excuse me, you later. 
Do you mind yeah. helping these good people into the cartoon law that fits this here Loki boy? Sounds like a lot of paperwork, but sure. Thanks! You'll be back in a jiffy to fix your life! <laughs> Uh, I love this attraction. So while we're sitting here waiting to get into our vehicle, random bit of recon trivia for you at Runaway Railway. The queue splits for two lanes, right? When you get after the, the pre show. Often people think it's better to go left or right. There is no difference. It's next to impossible for one side to be faster than the other because they're both delivering the same amount of guests, the same amount of vehicles. You can go left or right, it'll make no difference whatsoever. You're going to wait the same on the left as you would the right, no matter what the conditions are in that afternoon. And that is 136 to row three here, 21 minutes all in, and that includes the pre show. Leaving Runaway Railway at 1.46. We had, I had, <laughs> I had set aside an hour perhaps for that attraction, but we're getting out of here at 1.46. We are now presently 45 minutes ahead of schedule. We're supposed to be hitting Finding Nemo next at 2.30 back in Tomorrowland. Now we saw a very short queue at one point at Nemo, but then it grew a little bit. I'm kind of wondering if, if we're still gonna get that break. I also don't know if we're going to be getting one or two submarines. I'm hoping for two, but uh, Nemo's next. And if it's, I, I, I made a note that if, if Nemo is objectionable, that we'll try Star Tours, another uh, lightning lane attraction, which I, I just mentioned actually, that it's probably okay to do that one. It, it doesn't get the, the lightning lane influence. Plus it's a fun queue to be in. Uh, I like the queue more than the ride. <laughs> but let's, uh, let's head back to Tomorrowland and see what we can find there at Finding Nemo.
On our way, let's take a look at the tip board real quick just to see what the uh, status is around the park. Alice in Wonderland at 25, Utopia's 30, so that's a lightning lane attraction. I would skip Utopia right now, that's for sure. Uh, Big Thunder's a discount at 20. Uh, I heard something. Hi guys, wherever you are. <laughs> uh, just trying to see how, how the lightning lane attractions are doing. Uh, Indiana Jones, man, it's still light today. Indiana Jones is 30. I would still skip that right now because you can, uh, you want to take advantage again of those, oops, less popular, less popular attractions. Matterhorn is at 40. We're walking up on that right now. Let's do a quick look at that before we continue on that tip board. Post at 40. Lightning Lane is light. Back of the queue is right of tree. Right now, that's a total go. If there's no guests on the other side of the mountain, this would be a, a good time to be hitting Matterhorn. We're not going to, but if you were curious, it's not too bad right now, but it is extended. We're extended by about 10 minutes. That might be a legit 40. Yeah, look at that. Okay, here we go. You don't like seeing that. <laughs> as much as possible, middle of the day, avoid the big ones. Matterhorn, Space Mountain, Rise. Uh, hi, how are you? You guys? Uh, you know, the, the big e-tickets, the ones that uh, have you know, definite lightning lane influence, as much as possible, try to avoid those if you can. Uh, so let's see if our strategy or our choice to skip Nemo paid off. It, it looks like it did not. It looks like this, it cost us probably 10 or 15 minutes, I'm guessing. It is 1.54 as we approach, and uh, we were scheduled to be here at 2.30, so we're still ahead of schedule, but, uh, and I have actually budgeted 45 minutes for this attraction, which probably will wind up taking about all of that, I think. It is now posted at 30 minutes. How would I know? Let's find out. It is 154 as we enter this queue. Let's see how realistic that 30 minutes is. One reason why I chose to add Finding Nemo here, a standby track, no lightning lane influence, but two, and perhaps even more important, is that I like doing these long, slow loading attractions if you're trying to do everything, or, or close to everything. Right? I like doing these types of attractions in the middle of the day. You know, the ones that take a while for you to get through the queue, and it's a long ride, it's a 10 minute ride, rather than doing these in those peak, those optimal times when you want to be doing lightning lane attractions like rope drop, or in the evening, let's say after six o'clock. Uh, th th those times when, when those attractions, those lightning lane attractions are a little more accessible, we want to be capitalizing on that time. We want to be capitalizing on when crowds are lower, when crowds are less dense. Here, you're going to get the same result here that you would for most of the day. The self-regulating queue, you know, there's just a maximum that people are willing to wait. Uh, so you know, better to spend, you know, consume half of your afternoon out here doing rides like the monorail and the train, which by the way, we normally I would be on the train probably at some point today, but it's closed, so we can't add that one. But that is absolutely a perfectly legitimate and reasonable uh, attraction to be enjoying here between 12 and 4. I got a few more uh, that we'll talk about when we get done with finding Nemo. Excellent, excellent. Loading two submarines today. That's great. It is 2.11. Well, they were loading both subs, but they haven't looked. It's been five minutes <laughs> and they haven't loaded the second sub. As a matter of fact, they pulled these guests had a standby right here, so I'm not sure what the current situation is. And then here they come again. So they're not loading the second submarine now. In either case, it is now 2.18. We've been in the queue now for 23 minutes. It's looking like, where it looked like we were going to be 10 minutes ahead. We're now going to be on time at 30 minutes. It's probably going to take us. The rest of that, uh, it'll take us about six minutes probably to get into our next sub. Actually, I haven't done very much recon of this and what the launch to launch time is on subs. That's something I made, you know, I made to get into. Watch your 
your head, watch your step. So that was in fact 30 minutes to our boat uh, and I had budgeted 45 minutes for this and it's actually that's exactly how long that all took so this was the one occasion where we didn't beat the estimate and if we were to get into that queue right now we would the queue has shortened up a little bit so we caught that uh, at the probably the the worst possible moment for today unfortunate but we've been winning otherwise it is uh 245 ish right now in our next stop on our agenda is tree time, <laughs> that's exciting. Uh, we're gonna go get ourselves a churro over at the Sleeping Beauty Castle and enjoy that scene for a minute. And then uh, I think we're next up is uh, Peter Pan after that. Total walk on by the way, at Star Tours. And more of the same, golly, more of the same here at Buzz Lightyear. These are two examples of lightning lane attractions that are probably safe to do in the middle of the afternoon. Although, it, God, look at Astro Orbiter right now. I'm laughing because I have this, you know, I'm just so used to things being busy and I have this big strategy to do it. I can literally do anything I want right now. <laughs> it is not even three o'clock. I could do anything I want right now, except for the big attractions, the big ones. Space Mountain, again, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Rise of the Resistance, that kind of thing. Otherwise, I could do whatever I want. It's kind of nice. Right now, I want a churro. Looks like we just missed the Halloween cavalcade. We actually found a queue at the churro cart. <laughs> Go figure. The queue here is longer. The wait will be longer here to get a churro than it would be to ride Buzz Lightyear right now. Well, maybe not as long as Buzz Lightyear. That was just three minutes to get to that queue. Got my churro though. Fresh baked. You know you're at Disneyland one. Rio 4, 26 minutes ahead of schedule. Let's go check here. Okay, well that's not gonna happen, or is it? Oh my gosh, I thought it was closed because I didn't see any guests. This is wonderful. I didn't see any guests here. I thought the attraction might be closed. This is gonna be 30 minutes tops. 
in the queue at 306 right here at the entrance. More switchbacks not being used here. This is pretty ideal. This is about as good as it's going to get for Peter Pan right here at 306. Just about to our pirate ship, and it's been 23 minutes. It's the only word that I could think of. <laughs> only at best word for Peter Pan and this day. This day has been delightful. Got a lot of things done today. Well ahead of schedule. It is now just 3.33. 27 minutes to spare. We're in bonus time. Do you think we can do two more dark rides in this next 27 minutes? 3.34 now. Are so good, just four minutes to get to this point. Forty-eight, and we're out of toads. I still got time. Back of this queue looks worse than it actually is because they're not using these two switchbacks back here. So we're going to be in short order into the dungeon. Let's see. I'm going to say three, six, nine, twelve, maybe fifteen minutes. Oh my 
gosh, look at all the cash. <laughs> I've never seen so many dollar bills. Wow. Peter Pan Q has grown a little bit. It's out here now into the uh, Merlin's section. And they filled up one switchback. Two and almost 13 minutes later, we've arrived at Sleepy. Not too bad at all. Just over the four minute mark, or four o'clock mark, but that's okay. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, Snow White. Oh no! <laughs> oh, oh! I hope you're okay! Perfect. You're at Disneyland moments. <laughs> we were just at Disneyland today. We went to Disneyland today. What a, what a great afternoon that was. Testing a little midday strategy. Before we end this episode, let's take a quick look at the tip board to see what, what the park looks like now. Now that we've spent these past four hours avoiding the big attractions, avoiding the big e-tickets. Let's see, can I get there? There we go. Okay. We're just gonna look at the e-tickets, the big ones. Uh, big Thunder's 20, we saw that at like 10 or 15 before, right? Or was it higher? I don't remember. Big Thunder's kind of an outlier today. That's like the fifth biggest e-ticket, I think. You know, the one that gets the most traction. Uh, let's see. What else? Indiana Jones is now at 35. I believe that's down from what it was before. So I guess the point that I'm making is that uh, now that we're getting closer to the four o'clock, you know, or we're at four o'clock, getting closer to evening on a weekday, especially, uh, you're gonna see the tra you're gonna see the guest traffic start to slow down a little bit. So that's what I'm expecting to see on this tip board. Uh, Matterhorn is down to 30, although I think it was 30 before. No, it was 40. It was 40, yeah. Last time we were by there, it was 40. Runaway Railway is at 30. And let's see. Pirates is at 15. Roger Rabbit at 50. Go figure. <laughs> Space is at 50. I think we left it at 55 last time. Star Tours is down to 10. Oh, and there we go. Star Wars. Right. Wow. Rise is at 35 minutes right now. See, that's why you don't... That one right there, actually, is just reason enough, I think, right? Put that off as, as long as you can, assuming it stays open. You know, you, you never know when it's gonna break down. But just being able to get rise at 35 minutes today at 4, 10 in the afternoon now, that's a win. That's a win. 
stay tuned for more like this. Uh, I like to test things out in hourly chunks like that. Uh, I'll do a rope drop video and then I'll do like a 10 to two video. I'll do a noon to four. The last two hours, I don't know. We're gonna do the same over DCA as well. Part of our regular coverage, regular uh, lab science as it were. We're you know, just trying to figure out how to prioritize and organize your Disneyland day. Uh, and then if you want more content like this, you can join our, or subscribe to our newsletter. There should be a link in the description. Also join our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash freshbaked. Then of course, follow us on Instagram at underscore freshbaked on Twitter at freshbakeddisney, that's fresh with no E, and on TikTok at freshbakeddisney. Otherwise, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. Fresh baked.